Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. This is uh, part nine now of this Vulcan build. And as you can see, I've done some work around here, done some sanding and blending. I can still feel something there, so it's gonna need more work. But there's a lot of glue in there, there's that plastic shim, so I'm gonna leave it for now, let it cure, let it all shrink back, and then we'll go with some more Mr. Surfacer and attack that seam. Underneath feels good, underneath looking good. But what I'm gonna do now, is I'm just repeating myself really from a previous video in case people haven't seen it. As you will know in this Bombay I want it to be seam free so I've gone around with a brush and I've brushed in this product here which is Mr. Base White 1000 which is just a white version I think of Mr. Surfacer 1000. Mr. Surfacer 1000 is grey, uh, you can get it in black, you can get it in mahogany. I've used white because the Bombay is going to be white. Um, so what we do then is because we can't get in there and sand, it would be like impossible to get into that corner and sand it out. What I do is use some Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. You can use alcohol, but it's a lot harder because it doesn't um, dissolve it as fast. And also the other thing is, if you do this very soon after putting it on, it's a lot easier because it dries quick, it comes off easier. But if you leave it a couple of days like I have, it can be a lot more difficult to get it off, but it is a lot more hard wearing. So if you've got a big gap, Look, I know I've got a fairly big gap down this side here. It's best to leave it a couple of days because otherwise, if you do it when it's too soft, it'll just come out straight away. So all we do is cotton bud, get into the corners, and you can see straight away it's taking away the Mr. the white colour from the from the Bombay roof there. But that's that's not a problem. All we're doing is removing the excess and leaving it in the corners. And this is the same technique as you would do. If you were doing like you know the, the the armor plating on a tank or something if you've got um something with loads of rivets on and you just want to remove the excess from the seam um if you're doing something like what you've got here where you've got a seam you can remove it and and it will leave the seam behind um whereas if you want to sand it flat and get rid of the seam you need to sand it if you do this it's no good so we'll just go down the side here quickly and then i'll do this off camera because a lot of you guys are watching all these videos and you've seen enough of this before. So what we're doing, and that's all we're doing, is just removing the excess and leaving the remainder in the corners. Okay, so all we're doing is filling in the corners. As you can see, it's fairly time consuming. I need to be careful of my wingtips here. It's fairly time consuming, but um, but it just give a fantastic result. Okay, so I'm gonna go on and finish this now off camera. You don't need to sit and watch me do this, and then I'll be back. And we're back. Right, so I've put some masking tape on these corners to protect the wingtips, because I've noticed they're quite slender, and they kind of, when you put your model down, if you rest on, they dig in and, and it can damage them, so that's just to protect those. Right, so we've got um, our Mr. Surface are all removed now. So as you can see, when you look inside there, you can see we've got all lovely all corners and no gaps or anything. So that's going to look much, much better when it's painted. I may need to just go over a couple of little places. Like I've just noticed that just in there, in there, we can see there's a little gap. But um, we can see I could be too fussy, but we can see we, we, we may as well do it now that we've gone the, you know, we've gone 90% of the way. We may as well do it. So, uh, right. While we're letting this tail cure, we need to be getting on with something else. Um, so I'm going to start looking at the exhausts. Now, as I discussed in part eight, we have got the kit parts in the box to do both type of exhausts. So we've got the long ones and the short ones. One's 301, one's 201. I don't know which is which. But the long ones aren't mentioned in the instructions, only the short ones. So if we're going to do the long ones, we should be able to work it out because the parts are all labelled the same as they are for the short ones. So they're all going to go together the same. The forward part of the exhaust is here uh, with, with the turbines in it and that's these parts here and they're going to go in into the back of the, the wing like so. So I've got these parts off. These need a lot of clean up. When you get them off the sprue they've got all these ejector pin tabs on them. So you're going to get all them off and clean them all up and make sure it all fits nicely. So we've also got to drill some holes in here some one millimeter holes to drill in there which i missed out on the underside so i need to grab a one millimeter drill and i think i've got a one millimeter drill in here or is this bigger that's 1.5 millimeter so let me just get a one millimeter drill chucked up in fact we can do that now 
Okay, so I've got one millimeter drill here, and I'm just going to drill through into there like so. There we go. That's that one, and then the same in here. Do a bit of lubrication, couldn't it? Right, so that's those drilled in there, and so I don't forget them, I'm going to do these in here now. As we do that, I'm a bit of a forgetful Hector. And then we'll do that one in there. There we go. Right, so that's those done. Let's put the drill to one side. Now, with these, these are going to pop in here like so and what we can do is paint these all together when they're on the um i thought we might do something with them beforehand we'll see uh, but basically they're going to go in like that okay and then this is going to fit into the wing like that and straight away we can see we've got a step very large step there so I need to pack that up so I've got a piece of 10 thou card sat here and I'm just going to slip that in there and then we can hold this end so we've got it glued here here and here and not pushing down in that area and we've got it nice and smooth but we can also see that they're slightly over to the right so we need to remove some material from here and try and get them centered. Oops. That's better. That's better. So now we've got them flush on the tops and flush on the sides. If anything, that one's over that way slightly. That's because it's like that. There we go. So there we are. So a little bit of shim in there just to space that up and it saves us having to do lots of sanding and work around there so um I think i'll get these glued together i think i'll get them painted as well and then i'll be back okay so we've got something quite interesting here as you remember i had to sand material from this side to get it to fit to get it to move over and on this one it's the other way i need to pack it out to get it to fit nicely so that is very interesting because as you can see all of this here is perfectly aligned, so it's not a case of I've got a shift of the upper and lower wing halves because we've got a perfect alignment there, got perfect alignment there, everything's good. So very, very strange indeed. So in fact, there is a tiny step there, but it's nothing like 10 thou. So um, we've got perfect alignment there and perfect alignment there. Very interesting. So um, something to look out for when you're putting your wings together maybe really really concentrate on the alignment but the thing is you've got all of that structure inside which is aligning it so you know you're, you're kind of just be careful when you come to do these exhausts I suppose right so we're uh, ready to paint them now I've given them a clean up I've sanded some material off of that one added some plastic to that one um, added some plastic shim here and here to lift them up so all good so for painting i'm going to use lp54 dark iron this is a tamiya lacquer paint Ava again available these from premium hobbies and they are wonderful paints you can brush them you can spray them whatever and i'm going to brush them today because it is so hot um i don't want to be um using the airbrush because the paint will probably just dry before it gets anywhere near the plastic and the trouble is when you've got warm weather like this in a country where we don't have air conditioning and stuff, what will happen is you will end up with a very, very powdery, very grainy finish. You would probably be absolutely fine painting small bits and pieces like this, but when it comes to the bigger stuff, like actually painting the, the airframe, um, I would avoid it. Do something else, wait, to, wait for the weather to cool down a bit. Okay, so we could just brush that on there like that. And this isn't like the Tamiya acrylic, it, it brushes absolutely fine. I was going to use a um, Mr. Hobby Metalizer and then give it a polish afterwards, but I, after my experience with the front with putting a wash on, I'm thinking that maybe that isn't such a good idea. 
so there we go so that's the up here I'm gonna go around the outside edges just to make sure we don't see any grey plastic showing through let me look down in there and by the time I've done these I should be able to come back and give them a second coat but you can see it's a, a lovely lovely metallic finish on there so we'll just go down the inside of these As I say, really should be spraying this, but um, one, I don't like putting metallics through the airbrush because they're impossible to clean out. Well, not impossible, but it's difficult to clean them out. And two, it's so damn hot. So we can just brush this on. Just like so, I'm going to go around there as well because I don't know if that's going to be visible. When all is said and done. Okay, so that's that done. And then I could do the other one off camera and then we're also going to do in here, this area here. Just got the sides a bit because we don't know what we're going to be able to see in there. And there we go. Simple as that. So I'll get the rest done, give it another coat and I'll be back. So they're glued together now, just a case of gluing those um, turbines in there. And once they're on the plane, I'm going to put a black wash in there just to give it a bit of a highlight. Maybe dry brush something in there, we shall see. But um, I think we're going to have to do some more painting because there's, I think there's going to be some grey plastic showing. So this is three and four. So that's going to be this side here. So that's going to drop onto there. In fact, you can't really go wrong because they won't. Well, they will go if you want them to, but um, they, they've got a massive step. So you could get them wrong. Um, so basically that's now going to go in there. Okay, and we've got a very small step on there. That's absolutely fine. It's better than having a bigger step the other way. So what I've done, I've got this slightly higher than this because it's easier to sand that into that rather than sand that into that. So that's what we're doing. So we're just going to run some extra thin down these areas here, first of all, because they're not supported vertically. All right, so that's gone in there. Okay, plenty of glue, get them nice and strong, get them in there. There we go. And to get these engines lined up is sort of produced a bit of a step here, so that's okay, it can all be sanded out. But, um, I'm actually looking at it and maybe it's a little bit too far over, maybe I've used a slightly too thick a shim. Let me, um, Take that out of there, let the glue just dry off a touch and just sand some of that shim away. That's better. So we'll just go around again now, re reinvigorate that glue that's in there. Again, it's so warm, the glue is just drying. People in like California don't have aircon and stuff. I don't know how they do modeling, especially with the paint, but the, the glues and everything just dry instantly. Get some glue along that seam there. Some glue into there, into there, into there, there we go. So that's on there nice and solid now. So we'll let that go off, that's not going to glue the other one on and then we're away. Okay, so they're on now and just clamped and drying. So for those of you that have made the same mistake as me and not drilled these holes in the underside, um, if you remember we went in the, with the light torch and we found those two holes, we made a couple of pinprick marks and then where they're going to go. So what we can do now, we know where these holes are because we drilled them and they're in the right place. So these are the parts that are going to go in those holes. So obviously these two holes are the furthest apart. So I set my digital caliper there and I can measure between here and I can, I've already done this and I can see they're 27 millimetres. So if I come on here with the digital calipers, I can go on there. I could also use a rule and I can see they are 27 millimetres. So we're going to drill through now where those where I put those pinprick marks. Okay. 
and looking at the way those parts go in it looks like it's perpendicular to the surface not drilled through at 90 degrees so there we go so that's that one and then we'll just do the other side that pinprick there squeaky squeaky drill there we go so that's that one in there so that's that done now they're straight and they're going to come down to a point when we look in the instructions where they go in we can see here they do sort of taper in on each other so the next two pins are 18 millimeters apart okay and just as luck would have it we've got some 18 millimeter tape so i can take my 18 millimeter masking tape line that up over the i've done something wrong here because i've got one hole behind the other yeah the, the drill has wandered off the pinprick mark here we go the pinprick mark is there and I've managed to drill next to it. I think it's all going to be hidden, so that's okay. There we go. <laughs> I've got two holes there now. So if we take the 18 millimeter tape and we put that down on there, so it's centered over those holes, like so. There we go. Just push that down in. We get it sort of centered over those holes like that okay then we know if we've got a straight line going between there we can get another piece of tape let's use something a bit thinner actually and we can line up that hole there and that hole there okay and then we know that our other hole is going to be somewhere around here so if i'm right i should find the drill just goes through in a couple of turns and i'm probably not right because it hasn't gone through in a couple of turns so but we'll find out when we glue it all together and i'm not sure how much of a job those things do anyway but um the moral of the story is if you're building this model look at the instructions carefully and make sure you know where you go in what you're doing because as I say, I missed stuff out. There we go. So that's those in there. And then when we come to put these in, let's just have a look at one of them. Let's just get one off the sprue. It looks like the holes need to be bigger than one mil, to be honest. But... Uh, Obviously, Jess agrees. So they line up lengthwise, pretty much, and slightly off. But uh, it looks like they're going to go in okay. This one here needs to be moved back. So I'm just going to get the drill and just move that hole back. Just like so. And then that should fit in there. Yeah, a slight amount more needs to go. But there you are, I can see what we're doing now. So I think it's only that end that's going to be visible anyway. So there we go, that's gone in there. Okay, so that's the way to find those holes. So there we go. Okay, right, let's have a look at these exhausts. So We'll build the ones from the instructions and we'll build the other ones and then we'll decide from there what we're going to do. But uh, looking in the instructions here, this is some of the best kit design I've ever seen as far as part identification goes. And also the sprue nib connection points are good as well. They've got the sprue nib connection points on the sides here. Okay, and then there's one on the back, which is really good nothing on this edge at all so no nothing is going to damage that edge it's all lovely and uh, left clean for you so basically what they're saying is take this part here e2 and then you're going to got e4 and e5 and you're like oh no which is which on the back you can see on here we have a one and a two okay so that's engine one engine two on the back of these there is a little notch or two so on the back of there you can see 
This one on the right has one little notch in the bottom and this one has two little notches in the bottom. So this is one, that one's two. So straight away you know which one's which. So that's going to go in there. Okay, and I'm guessing that's going to sit like that. Now I haven't built one of these. This is the first time I've ever done this. So bear with me. So we're just going to put a drop of extra thin in there. A little drop of extra thin in there. And then we're good to go. Right, so that's that one in there. And then this one is number two because I've only got one side off. I haven't got all four sides off the sprue. Okay, so that one's going to go into there, into those little notches at the back. So again, we'll put a drop of extra thin in there and a drop of extra thin in there. And that should be enough to hold them in place. Right, and now we can see we've got one and two, so we can still identify which is which. So then it's telling us to fit these onto the back. OK, but don't get any glue on it because that's going to sit there and that's going to help us align these parts here. Now, once again, you can see we've got E8 and E9 and then we've got E10 and E11. Again, these parts are numbered and on the inside. You can see that on the insides of these parts, we've got numbers moulded into them. Okay, so we've got 1S, 1P, so that's one port, one starboard, 2S, 2P, two port, two starboard. So if we get our two ones, it's so those two and there are twos, okay? So 1S, so if this is engine number, hang on, this is engine number one here. And this is starboard, so this one is going to go on this side here. Like so, <laughs> quite fiddly. Okay, so that one's going to sit like that. And it is a lovely fit. And then that one is going to sit like the other way around, Nudge. Like that. Okay, so there's no positive location or anything, but that's because of the the accuracy um, if they start putting big pins and stuff on it wouldn't look right so that's going to go in like that okay so let them just sit together feels like something is holding that one away there is an ejector pin in there I'm not sure if it's got any flash around it has got the same okay so 1p it's going there so then what we need to do is just tack it in place so we get some glue on there and then we can manipulate it So, much easier if it's held in place actually. And then this one is going to go like this. Again, we'll get some glue between the two just to give us something to work with. That makes life a lot easier. And then drop a glue down there to hold that one in there. And there we go. Now this is going to be a struggle for beginners I think because it's quite fiddly but um, I think the secret is get some glue on it so it's held in place and then you can nudge it around. If you try and get it all to fit perfectly without any glue as you saw me do at the start it uh, doesn't go together very easily. Okay and again make sure you do get any glue on this part and if you do just take it away straight away. So that's that one done. So we can do the other side. So this is this is 2P or not 2P. Right. Okay, so that's going like that. Or not. Stay there you swine. Right, and then this one. It's going like that. 
bit of drop of glue in there, hold that one. Yeah, it makes life a lot easier when you've got a bit of glue in there. Get a drop of glue in there, nudge them together. Push that plate onto the back. And then before it's all dry, I would suggest trying it on your aircraft. As we can see there, it's all fitting nicely. Okay, give that a little nudge to level that up. Now you can see that's your exhaust done and ready to glue on. You can just take it away and uh, do a bit of final, final alignment. And there we go. Very nice representation of the exhaust. So we can just get some glue in there now, make sure it's all glued up nice and solid. There we are. There we go. Lovely. As we can see, we can just plonk them on just like that. Lovely job. So, because we've got the parts in the box to make the other type, okay, and because everything is labelled, we don't need instructions which is lucky because we don't have instructions for this so these are the i think the older ones aren't they somebody can tell me. i think the longer ones are the older ones so we can take this part here and again we've got one and two on there we've got these two exhausts here we've got one and two on them so this one's number two so that one's going to drop in there just the same as the other one did the shorter one and this one should be a lot easier because there's a bit more to how old it's all a bit bigger, a bit longer. And then that one's going to drop in there, like so. Okay, so there's your actual exhaust. And then the shrouds around the outside, we've got one S there, we've got one P there, so that's two and this is one. So one S is going to be this side. So that one's going to drop in there. I'm not going to bother using that ring because I've got eyes and I can line stuff up. I think actually holding that ring in place makes life a bit more difficult. And then one P is going here. So I think what I would prefer to do is do them like this. Just get them glued together. like so, and then do the actual alignment on the airframe. Because after all, that's where they're going to end up. We're going to need a bit of filler on these because there is a bit of a gap there. The fit isn't perfect, but it's bloody good. It's not bad, it's just not perfect. I always think the perfect fit of all plastic kits ever made, the most perfect fit of any part I've ever seen, is the tail section on a Tamiya 132nd Spitfire Mark 9. Is it the first one that came out? You get a separate tail section that goes on the back of the fuselage so you can have different tails and the fit of that is just absolutely stunning. So this is 2P. This is the left hand side. That's a nicer fit on that one. So that one's going in there. And then this one is going to go on here. Get some glue in there. Get that one together. And then get some glue in there. That doesn't want to squeeze up. There we go. And 
there we are. What you could do with this jig, I don't know if it will work. You could push that jig over there and that'll hold everything together for you. So using it on the wrong side. <laughs> but it's actually pulling everything in. So there you go, that's what that jig was for. The man with the immediate instructions got it wrong. So, <coughs> so that will fit in there. And as you can see, it fits lovely. So look at the side. Yeah, that's great. So very, very nice job indeed. Well done, Airfix. That's really, really nice. <clears throat> so they've done a beautiful job. The only way of doing them better would be cast them in resin. But uh, there we go. I don't know if this will work on these. I think they're probably too big. Yeah, they are. They're too big. But for these, you can use that little jig. Squeeze it on and it will round everything up for you. And there we go. Get some more glue in there. So I'm just going to put it on that side because it's this side that has the issue. That should hold it all together. So there's your two different types of exhausts. Long and short ones, 301 ones, 201, I don't know which is which. I should know because I used to make bloody parts for them. <clears throat> Not for Vulcan, but I made Olympus parts for Concord. And, um, I actually retooled the all the tooling for the Olympus 593 combustion chamber head. So I um, changed all the machining processes and half the cycle time. So anyway, there we go. So I'm going to see what's next. Right, so we've got all our exhaust built up now. Um, these, this other side, the three and four on the longer type exhaust, they were a bit more struggle to get together. So I cut that jig thing in half and I've managed to wedge those rings over and it's holding it all together while the glue dries. But um, I think basically going forward, I think what we need to be looking at is, is also opening those holes up on the inside because there's flash in there. Just noticed there's, there's flash inside those exhausts. Um, but but uh, also going forward, um, I think it would be a good idea to sand the outside of these exhausts, the bit that I'm taking the flash off now. It's like a round tube that all the petals go around. Um, it would be a good idea to actually um, sand those on the outside to remove some of their diameter, just make them a bit smaller and then the petals can butt up together easier. So, um, yeah, if I was building another one, that is what I'd do. So, um, basically, they're done now. So, wedge that over there. So, they're all done. Okay, so I can decide which ones I'm going to use at a later date. So, looking at the undercarriage, I'm going to get the undercarriage legs glued together because they're, for some reason, Airfix have made them in two parts. So, we're going to have a seam to deal with and everything. So, um, basically, we're going to get these legs off. So, we've got G03 here. So this is G03 here. This does all look a bit shiny and oily, but rest assured it has been washed. So, And then we've got G24, which is here. So we'll get that one off there. That one off there. Okay, so those legs are going to go together. Now this piece here, G32, they've got in touch with me regarding this. And I've looked at some photographs, some images of the undercarriage. And it looks as though Airfix have done a Hong Kong Models 30 second scale Lancaster here and incorporated a, um, a locking bar. So I think there should be a single bar there, G32. So I'm going to look into this, but I think it should only be the top piece, not the bottom piece in there. I think that would be painted red and have a removed before flight tag on it. So I, I still need to look into it a bit more because I'm, I'm still not 100% sure. But there is um, there's a Vulcan to the Skies article available on the internet. If you if you Google that, um, I was going to say Land Rover, then I've got that from. If you Google Vulcan undercarriage, there is there's some lovely images that will come up, um, drawings um, of the undercarriage and how it all works and how it folds and everything, and it's very interesting. And uh, you'll see in there, they've got all these different colours of all these different parts and everything's colour coded. And it looks like there shouldn't be two rods there. But um, anyway, so we'll clean these up. Just get the sprue nibs off. Not going to be fussing too much about seams because we're going to have a, a 
big seam clean up after this is glued together. So just sand over. In fact, I won't sand that. I'll scrape that seam away. I have to do this when parts are mating. We've got a seam in the middle. Use a round blade just to scrape the seam away. And you're kind of, in doing that, you're making the face slightly concave. So that is going to go in there like that. Okay. And that has got to go up inside there, I'm guessing. So is there supposed to be, there's supposed to be a gap down there, so that is correct. Okay, so we can get some extra thin in there. Okay, and I'd also I'm kind of thinking it might be a good idea, if you are building one of these, to um, get these undercarriage legs together first, because then they, they can be really hard and set before you, uh, before you, um, need them basically so I'm just gonna grab my inside out tweezers as I call them and just clamp that together and that should set nice and solid and we get some glue up in there as well okay and then I'm gonna glue the other one together and then I'll be back right the time has come we are going to fix the nose and then I'm gonna to have to leave this alone for a day so we can see that it's a lovely fit after the work I've done and it's all gone together nicely. Um, so what I'm going to do is initially I'm going to get some glue, use this um, Mr. Cement Deluxe and get some glue around here. just so that I know we've got something going on inside because this needs to be a nice strong joint I don't want, don't want it all falling apart on me okay now I'm probably going to get some oozing here but hey ho so that can slip in there like that okay and that can just sit on there while I close this glue up right. okay so that's all lining up lovely. It's all fitting very nice indeed. I just need to check that it's straight. A little banana shaped airplane. It's all good. So what we can do now is put it down on the bench. And this is going to be a problem because it just wants to keep coming apart right so we take some mr. cement s and we can get some down into that joint and really let the glue go in you want a lovely strong joint the trouble is in getting a strong joint you're going to be Putting a lot of solvent in there, so it's going to be asking for shrinkage. So that's going to be the one big downside to this. So be prepared to have shrinkage in your joints. Okay. And the other thing we need to do is get some glue into those little side bits glue get in that seam and over here and up there just making it as strong as we possibly can give it a squeeze give it a good push Just if you remember I said before this wing is shorter than that one in length so you can see we've got a lovely seam here but a bit of a gap there so once again I'm going to take my plastic card and I think 10 thou is too thick yes it is so I'm just going to get a piece of 5 thou plastic card Let's see if that goes in there yeah 
don't really see much point in putting five thou in there. Maybe down on the bottom there. Yeah, it's not worth it. The whole idea of putting plastic card in a joint is to A, make it stronger and B, it uh, reduces the amount of filler so therefore reduces the shrinkage. So there we go, that's our nose on there, all nice and solid, job done. So there's our Vulcan guys, that's it. You can see the it's trying to pull itself apart because of the weight of the nose. So hopefully that will dry in its correct state. I'm really, really pushing it together here. All the strength I've got, and you can see it's closing up and oozing glue out. That's a good thing. As I say, it needs to be bloody strong. And it needs to be straight, and it is straight, so... Looking at it along the length, looking good. All looking good, all looking lovely. And while I think of it, I'm going to put a piece of tape over that entrance hatch. Because when we start doing all the sanding, we're going to fill our cockpit up here with, area up with dust. So there we go. That is our Vulcan really taking shape. So I've got to leave that now for a day. And, uh, and do something else, like Land Rover, there we go, there we are, that's the nose on, and then what we'll do next is we'll get some black paint in this area down here. And then we'll fit these sides. I've got one here cut out. Is this for this is for this side? See how these fit. Go in there like that. Yeah, a little bit of sanding required to get a bit of a better fit, but on the whole quite nice. Nice. Right, I'll see you whatever. Alright, so it's been a couple of hours now. I've put some Mr. Surfacer on here, it's been kind of right since I glued the nose on. Put some Mr. Surfacer all the way around. Um, also gone over that seam there, because I'm going to have to scribe a new line around, and I'm tempted to actually scribe it just off, although this edge of this door is going to be a problem. So I'll probably have to scribe it in where all the filler and everything is, which I don't like doing, but we shall see. Um, I've also put some more along here, because I noticed after with the shrinkage, so it still feel a line. So we've got some along there as well. And as you can see, it's quite thick here because there's a bit of a step up to the fuselage, probably where I've been doing a lot of sanding around here. So um, we'll blend all that in. And there we go. That's going to be the first application. Uh, that's probably going to shrink back quite a lot into that seam. So it's going to be a good day or so before I can do any more work with this. So, I mean, I could work on it and work on it and work on it and buy, what is it today? It's Saturday and it's bloody hot. <laughs> um, by Tuesday, I'd have a line there again, a big sink mark. So, and I know you're thinking, oh, that could be your seam line, but the trouble is it won't be even, and it won't be even in width or depth. So that's the issue. The one thing I am gonna do before that Mr. Surfacer dries off is just grab my scriber through there, push it through there, just to get that Mr. Surfacer out of those scribe lines. There we go. We don't need to worry about it anywhere else. It's just on the top there. So there we go. Right, so we'll let that uh, go off. I've, done, I've put some more on the back as well. And it's going to be all about sanding that joint and getting it all smooth. I might end up having to bring the Mr. Surfacer up a little bit further. But uh, there, is a, there is a bit of a step there. I've got some movement going on, I think. But, um, movement in the parts, I mean, when they've come out of the mould. As I say, this wing is shorter in length than that wing, so that's obviously shrunk. So if it's shrunken 
that way it will have shrunk in, in all it wouldn't just shrink in one direction so it could be that these parts are actually physically smaller than they should be so um ugh. airfix quality once again be interesting to see how fills goes together because as i said before i'm sure phil's kit will be perfect because uh not the way he builds it i mean his actual kit uh, he, he will do a very nice job of it he always does but his kit may may well be perfect because airfix gave it to him so I doubt they just pulled one out of the pile. So here we go. Right, let that go off and get sanded. Okay, so that's all sanded down now again. And um, the one I'm doing this is with a nice 220 hard stick, going in being careful not to touch these little raised lumps and bumps here. I wish they'd made that as a separate part. It's to make this so much easier. Um, so yeah, just going in with the 220, keeping it nice and square and everything. So get everything level and flush. I've also gone around the exhaust. Same thing, keep it square and flush. Go around a sand, don't worry about that bit down in there because you're not going to see it because you've got panels covering all that up. But um, just go down like that and then come along with a 400. Again, a hard stick. You don't want to be using sponges and stuff. Not when you're trying to level out bits and pieces and get them flat. So the other thing we'll have to do here is actually when we come to put these panels on, we'll have to see what they look like because if this is no longer straight, we'll have to make sure it's sanded straight. So. We'll have to dry fit them before we uh, go into the painting stage. Um, <clears throat> so basically, yeah, just just hard sticks, not too coarse, you know, 220 and then 400, plenty good enough for primer. Again, on the nose up here, you come in with this stick up here, just go in, come in at 45 degrees, work around the curves so as not to put any flats on there. And then that is going to be a preliminary Mr. Sur a preliminary <laughs> Mr. Surfacer application. Now I can see I've got a bit of a lump there. So I'm just going to take that down and I'm going to get in there with a skinny stick. Just to take that edge off of that lump. Okay, it doesn't matter because it's all going to sink anyway. So I'm now going to give it one more coat. I'm going to go over with some black and then I'm going to leave that overnight. To, uh, to properly harden off and then we can look at um, perhaps getting some primer on these areas or getting this scribed at least but um, I'm a bit worried actually because I've looked at the weather forecast and we got like 30 degrees and 28 degrees and 29 degrees for the next sort of week and I can't spray in those temperatures so I'd have to do it at night which means I'd have to have the window open and with the compressor going I don't think my neighbours would be too happy because they've all got their windows open so mm, bit, um, bit of a catch-22 uh, we'll have to see where we go from here. But um, <clears throat> there we go. So one more layer of Mr. Surfacer on there. Let that dry overnight and see how we go. This here feels fine now. I might just put another little layer of Mr. Surfacer on there just as a just as a sanity check. Again over here, maybe put some black on there. And um, by the way, I found some more sink marks here. You've got one there and one small one there. And that's where those um, locating pegs are in the back of the wing. There's nothing there. Um, but uh, yeah, there's... There's a lot of sink marks everywhere, but some of them are so faint. It's like there's sink marks all around here where the um, the ribbing is for that big lovely frame that's inside. But the thing is, they're so faint, they're not going to show, particularly under a matte coat of paint. So I'm not going to worry about those. But these on here would have really stuck out like a sore thumb, all of these. So especially those back there in the corner, they were really deep. So um, there we go. In, in hindsight, these sink marks up here... You may as well leave them until you fit the fuselage because the fuselage isn't a perfect fit anyway on my kit. As I say, I think the wings have shrunk. But, um, so yeah, you may as well do them at the same time as you do that seam. So, uh, there you go. But, um, it is, I mean, there's, there is an advantage to doing it early on because all the sinkage in that, in that Mr. Surface that I applied then would have all gone now. It would have all, it would all shrunk back. Whereas... If you did it at the same time as this, you'd have a thicker layer of Mr. Surface, so you're going to get more sinkage over a more period, longer period of time. So, pay your money, takes your choice, really. So, I'm going to get some black Mr. Surfacer on there. Some of this one, black Mr. Surfacer, that's 1500. And um, get some of that on there, and we're good to go. So, just get some out of here. This brush is hard. Just get some out of here and just brush it all on, all over the joint, all over where there's Mr. Surfacer currently. go and that's that all done and then we can go over these engines as well getting that seam there getting that seam there 
over the top. As I say, I'm not particularly bothered about the area in the middle because no one's ever going to see that. It's going to be covered up by a plate. So, why not? Why not, eh? It's just a bit of a guide to see where I go with it all. And then when I sand that, if I end up with a black line in the middle and grey on either side, I know I've still got a divot there. And the same here. I'm going to put a bit more on here. And I may as well put some... Oh, that's already done, I've already done that bit there, haven't I? I'll brush some up over there, brush some up over there. And there we go. So, let that all sort itself out. And then we can come back and sand it. Right, so here we go, moving forward. We've we've got the Mr. Service all rubbed down now. This is 24 hours later, and uh, I think I'm gonna have to park this for a couple of days because I keep putting Mr. Surfacer in, and then like the next day I can feel the join again. So I think obviously the solvents in the cement are still doing their thing with this plastic. Um, some, something's going on, but I don't wanna be painting it all and everything and finding that I've got issues. Things I can't paint it anyway, it's too bloody hot. It's 32 degrees yesterday here, and it's going to be hotter today, apparently. So, anyway, um, this fin. Now, if you remember when I put this together, if you don't remember, go back and have a look. I've taken a lot of material off of this tab. Um, it doesn't seem to want to go in, and I was thinking this tab was too long. I've taken material off the back of it. I'm also going to take another bit off of there now. Um, the tabs are too wide, I've had to scrape them down. To get them to fit in um, it's been the worst fitting part of the kit so far but once you get the tab sorted it does go down quite nicely so that'll go in there nicely and then we can get some mister servicer in there come with the cotton bud afterwards and that'll be a lovely join um, the other thing is I've noticed I don't know if I can catch it in the light but we've got more sink marks you can see down here you can see it there on the back there you go it's all along there and then the same on this side. So yeah, thanks for that airfix, brilliant. Um, I'm just gonna check these control services. I'm not sure if these have got any. I don't think they have. Uh, where's the rudder? Where's the rudder? Has the rudder got any? Nope, the rudder is fine. So just gonna have to deal with those. Easy to deal with them now when it's off rather than when it's on. So uh, I've also got to decide I've, I've now got to decide what version I'm going to do to decide which um, tail cappy I'm going to have. But um, as I say, these tabs, they need to be thoroughly thinned out. I'm also using, I do this using a radius blade to scrape away the seam in the centre. And that way you end up with a kind of con concave face. And you know that then you haven't got a ridge or anything holding it off. So um, that's something to bear in mind. So just come in there, just take a bit out of there like that. So that might improve the fit a touch. But um, it certainly needs quite a push to go in. But uh, there we go. And that's that's in. Um, so I'll get these sink marks done. And then we'll get it fitted in. And then we'll get some Mr. Servicer on the seam. Okay, so this is actually now like three days, I think. Three days since I did this. And I can feel I've got a step there. So... We've obviously got some shrinkage there in the Mr. Services, so we'll have to put some more on there. Um, or or just sand it out. It's, it's a very small step. I can feel it's obviously sunken in here. Remember, there's a lot in there because of all that, all those sink marks. Another thing I want to say, I've had a look at Phil Flory's uh, review again. And it looks like he has got the sink marks all down here, all along here, all down here, across here. Uh, he also has fading in and out um, panel lines on here, which I don't have. So... That's a bit unusual. Um, so yeah, we'll be interested to see what he does with those. But he also states in the review there are no sink marks. So, but then so did I. So I don't know. Maybe we're looking at this through rose tinted glasses or something. And then when you actually come to build it, things change. I don't know. But anyway, um, so that's going to need some more work in there. Uh, the fin, I've now put my third layer of Mr. Surfacer in the sink marks. So let that dry off. This weather is drying in no time. It's going to be 30 degrees again today, I believe. 
So um, there we go. Um, we also need to start looking at the undercarriage. We've got some seams down the side here. Uh, we've also got a nasty little gap around that bit there. So that'll have to be attacked. And then I believe this part here is going to be chrome. Um, and this part here maybe. I'm not sure. Does that go up and down in there? Or is it the bottom part there that's chrome? I don't know, I'll have to check my references. But um, anyway, the, the undercarriage legs are black unusually. So they're going to have to have their seams dealt with before we start adding bits on. Because um, once we add this piece here on, then we won't be able to get into the uh, into here to get rid of the seams and stuff. So best to do it all individually and just take your time and, and get it to look nice. So I'm going to call that a day for part nine. Um, as some of you know, I've now got a new camera. So from part 10 onwards, we should see much better footage. So um, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon for part 10. I think, as I said, I think things are going to slow down now because I can't do any painting. It's too hot. I'm waiting for the Mr. Servicer to harden off and shrink and this, that and the other. So things may get a little spread out. We shall see. Thanks for watching. See you soon.